thick of COVID, we wasn't able to shake hands and hug one another. But thank God he got us through that pandemic. Amen. I do give honor to Pastor Mike and to Bishop Gary Bush. So glad to see you today and my own husband and to all God's blessed people on today. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And I don't know what you come to do, but I come to lift up the name of Jesus. So we've got a chance to look at everyone, see what you're wearing. If you're that type, you know that you say, hmm, let me scout her out. Guess what? God is good. Amen. He's our provider. He's our Jehovah Jireh. Amen. And we got come to give him praise on today. Amen. So I'm going to come before you with a few praise and worship songs. And we're just going to lift up the name of Jesus today. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy of the praise. If it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Amen. I'm grateful that God saved me one day and sanctified me and filled me with the awesome, wonderful gift of the Holy Ghost. And I'm grateful to it. Amen. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh.
us to a higher place of praise. Amen. As we lift up the name of Jesus. Zion is calling me to a higher
praise. Hallelujah. 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 Great is the Lord and great is to be praised. Great is the Lord and great is to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. something special. Amen. He gave us a part of himself. Yeah. He put his spirit down within us. Yeah. And sometimes that spirit just should rise up yeah. in you and want to give glory yeah. to the one to whom it's all yeah. due. Yeah. Amen. I praise God today. I give him glory. Amen. Amen. Take a trip sometime and read over in that last three or four chapters of Revelation and see what's going on in heaven. Yeah, right. Amen. Around the throne, there are beasts that praise him 24-7, crying, holy, holy, holy. Amen. And there's a number that's going to be there, a number that no man can number. All nations, all tribes, crying praise and glory to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just bless the Lord. We bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank God for his goodness to us. Yes, yes. I don't apologize for praising him. Amen. 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 He deserves. Amen. I play that song. I've got it on my little rotation. I have a little recorder at home. And one of the first songs on that recorder is, You Deserve the Glory. And sometimes I just play that all over. It just gets in my spirit. Amen. God is good all the time. Even when I don't understand it, even when stuff is going crazy, he's still good. Because he promised me he was going to make even the stuff I don't understand work for my good. The stuff's not good, but he's going to make it work for my good. Amen. I give him glory. We bless the Lord today. Amen. And right here, we're going to give space for our pastor. He wants to come forth and say a few words. Amen. And then we'll be our guest for today. Amen. Yes, sir. I didn't think it was going to be this quick. My God, my God, we're in for a good time. Amen. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Aren't you glad you've been redeemed? Aren't you glad you've been bought with a price? Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you got the right to praise him. Amen. So don't stop my praise. Amen. Don't stop my praise. This is, I just got up because I want to just, you know, be in order and, and, and then y'all can do what y'all want to do, but... I, I, Bishop Bush, he's a man of, listen, he, he has the office of Bishop, but if you notice him on his show, Motivating Moments, I think that's what it is, 
He always says, I'm Pastor Gary L. Bush. Yeah, I watch him. Now, most people, if they got the title bishop, Listen, y'all, titles don't mean nothing. If you got a title, listen, and then let, me, let me help you out. You got to do the work of your title. That's when your title means something. Now, Bishop Bush does the work of his title. But he don't necessarily always say, I'm Bishop Gary L. Bush. And for that, I love him. And man, we go back a long way. A long way. And man, we used to clean the theaters together. Yeah. And man, I said that last year, didn't I? But I'm saying that again. Amen. But he's, he's, he's an honorable man. And I just love him for him just being him. And the wonder is called abundant love. Because there's a lot of love. Amen. That comes from the church. And it comes from, listen. You can only do what your leader do. And he shows love. And what happens is that it trickles, hey my God, it trickles down to the members. Amen. And I feel the love. Amen. And we thank God for the church mother being here. Amen. Sister Kyra. Amen. 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 We thank God. Amen for her and all of God's people. Amen being here. Brother Kathy, you did a good job doing praise and worship. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all act like y'all want to have church. Amen. Oh no, 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 no. I said y'all act like y'all want to have church. Amen. Just a little bit. And then I looked over here, I see a young lady named Curlin. I don't know if that's your last name now. Amen. Listen, I'm, I'm going to share something with you. We got in a fight. I don't know if she can remember that. It was in the fourth grade. And, and, and I'm going to tell you something. She beat me up. I had to walk home. But thank God we saved and love the Lord now, don't we? Man, oh, man, you can't tell me what them women want to do, man, because yes, 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 but thank God we saved, man, we love the Lord. <laughs> Amen, because I'm saved now. And see, I never did like to fight anyway. You know, I'm just not a fighter. Amen, but we love you all with the love of God. Amen. I'm going to give you back into the hands, amen, of the, uh, I call him the rabbi, because he loved the, the word of God. Amen. God bless you. I don't know, did the choir have something they wanted to do? Okay, well that's, uh, at this point we wanted to turn it over to Abundant Love, amen. And if they have a choir that wants to come forth, or wherever the service goes from here, amen. We put it in your hands, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Can you lift your hands and let's give God some praise? Come on, lift your hands. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. This is why you came. This is the reason you came. Hallelujah. We bless you. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Now clap your hands, everybody. You're here. You're not clapping your hands. Clap your hands. Amen. We are here to praise God. The Bible says, oh, that men, and I'm sure it means women, would praise the Lord, amen, for his goodness unto men. How many know the Lord been good to you? Yeah. All right, turn to, turn to your neighbor and tell them what good thing that the Lord did for you. Oh, I said one. I said one. I said one. I said one. You know what? And that, that proves that we can still have testimony service and not have a long time doing it. Amen. God is good all the time. Amen. Even when it's bad, it's good. Because all things work together for good. Watch this. Now, 
not for everybody. It's for them that love the Lord, them who are the call according to his purpose. Well, pastor, I'm not a, I'm not a bishop, and I'm not a pastor, and I'm not a preacher, and I'm not an evangelist. Well, let me help you. You still got a call. You are called to be sanctified among them that call on the name of the Lord. Look at somebody say, answer your call. Amen. It's to be set aside for the Lord Jesus. All right, we're going to call the choir. Choir, come on. Give us a couple of select. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, y'all sit down for a minute. Sit down for a minute. We need to, we need to, we need to. Uh, take an offering. I, I said take. We want to receive an offering. Amen. In honor of the man of God of this house. Amen. Amen. How many know it's a good thing to honor me that God has put in place? The Bible says that we should not muzzle the ox. He's not calling the preacher an ox, but he's comparing him to an animal that does heavy work. And if you don't think preaching is heavy, We'll put you up next Sunday morning and see how you do. I can get no amens just then. All right, listen, and so we don't want to muzzle the ox. The Bible says that the workman is worthy of his hire. It means when he puts the work in that we should support the work of God. Paul said it like this. He said, if I have sown to you spiritual things it is a small thing that I read carnal material things from you I, I want you to understand something we can't raise enough money to pay for the gospel it's, it's priceless but we do want to show appreciation for the people and the men and women that God has put in place to deliver the word to us amen so I'm going to who what, who are the officials here? All right, all right. I need. All right, all right. I, I got one from here, and I need one from us. Man, come up here and join. All right, Elder Smith is there too. Now there are a number of ways I'm sure you can give. I never thought, Pastor Payton, that we would get to the place where we had to give so many instructions. At offering time. Back in the day, we used to just grab a piece of money. Everybody would stand up. They'd have you face the outer walls. You'd come down along the wall, give your offering, and then return to your seat by the center aisle. Don't work like that anymore because some of us don't carry cash anymore. Some of us don't use checks anymore. Let me see your hand if you use checks. Still using checks. Also, also okay, all right. Man, we got we got a little we got a little fraternity here. Right. Amen. I have a check this morning, but incidentally, uh, you must know that in a matter of time, checks are going to be obsolete. Right. Pastor, why do you say that? Because I read the Bible. Yep. And I know for the Antichrist and the beast to be able to control everybody's buying and selling, yeah. checks have to be done away with. Yeah. And so we can see these things forming. The Bible says when we see these things, know that it's not even at the door. That means what kind of people we should be seeing that these things are occurring. But if you're going to give to more uh, this evening or rather today by your mobile phone, you can give that way. Is there? Is there? Okay, we, we don't have cash yet? We, okay, okay. It, it, now this this is pre pastoral anniversary, right? Okay, all right. Well, we need the pastor's cash app then. Dollar sign Michael Payton Senior. Dollar sign. Dollar sign Michael. Don't transpose the A and the E. The A comes before the E when you spell Michael. It ends with L. L means God. I, I'm right in. Because that's the way I have to remember myself. <laughs> Michael Payton, P A Y T O N, senior. That's all. Okay. That's where, I, if you're going to use Cash App today, that's where, sit again. 
or Giblify? Can you all have Giblify too? Okay, Giblify go to the church though, right? Okay, all right. If you if you use Giblify, it's going to be Restoration Church of God in Christ as as the location. But since it's past, I mean, I hope I don't get in trouble here. Okay, if, if, you, if you if you if you give if you give Giblify. Uh, it'll come to the church, and the church will see that he gets it. But if you give cash app, it's going straight to him, and we'll, we'll cut out the middleman. Is that all right? Okay. Now, it's not just for the pastor. It's an obedience to the Lord. I, I don't know. Do y'all have Sunday school over here? On Tuesday nights. Okay. So, so you all have already, have you already had the hard-hearted lesson? Y'all haven't had it? That might be the lesson coming up. This morning, our Sunday school lesson talked about a warning for the hard-hearted. And, uh -huh, and it was talking about people who should have compassion and give and miss opportunities to give. How many opportunities to give have you missed when you come to church? We couldn't have made it in the Old Testament because you couldn't come to church without an offer. And it had to be a good offer. Because if you brought a bad offering, the fire wouldn't come down and you'd have to drag your sacrifice back through the court and everybody would know that you didn't bring an offering that was acceptable to God. Aren't you glad it's not like that now? In a sense. But God's still watching what you give. Everybody getting a raise except the church. I can't give no money over that church. Well, then what's your child doing running around here in Jordan's? Okay, all right. See, see, you contribute to the thing that you value. And if you watch where a person spends their money, I, I mean... If you watch where a person spends their money, they will tell you what's important to them. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. So, so what I'm trying to say to you is if you love the church and you love the man of God, give like you love the church and love the man of God. Is that all right? Amen. All right. I have an envelope from the church. Amen. And I'm trying to get rid of the rest of my checks, so I wrote a check this morning. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, my check is for two hundred dollars. We have a contribution here uh, from the church, and I want you to do your very best. Okay, go past George Washington, go past Abraham Lincoln, go past Alexander Hamilton. Okay, let's start at uh, Jefferson. Somebody didn't understand what I just said. <laughs> Washington is on one dollar. Lincoln is on. The, Five dollar bill, Alexander Hamilton, which is not a president, but he's on ten dollar bill. Jefferson is on the twenty dollar bill. So let's start at twenty dollars. Is that all right? All right. Let's pray here. Father, it is in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus Christ that we thank you for this opportunity to give. It is an opportunity. It's an opportunity for us to obey your word, to prove to be disciples, because you said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And then it's an opportunity for us to start the cycle of sowing and reaping, because you said if we give, it'll be given to us better than we gave it, because we'll receive it good measure, pressed down. Shaken together and running over, men will give into our bosoms. And so as we give, here's, here's my prayer, Lord. My prayer, here's my prayer. My prayer is that when they give today, that all monies that belong to them that's being held up, I want you to release it. And let it come into their possession so that they can handle the things that are necessary. In Jesus' name, the Lord's people said, thank God. Amen. And amen. All right. Do we still stand in march? Okay. All right. Let's stand up. Okay. 
All right, Kyle, I'm going to let you be an usher on that corner over there. Randy, I'm going to let you be an usher on that corner over there. All right, stand up. Stand up. Stand up here. Don't make people walk over you. Face the outer walls. Even if you're given by your phone, I want you to walk. When you come past, when you come past the table, look at somebody, wave, say, God bless you. All right, start them out on both sides. Here they come. All right. He's able. <laughs> everybody's coming, everybody's giving. Yes. All right. Are there people here? I just got a sign. You may have your debit card or your credit card. And you'd like to give if you you don't have a car set? Okay. That's okay. All right, that's okay. If what hold, hold on a minute. Hold your hand up, Sister Natasha. Okay. If you give an offer to Pastor Mike and you want to use your credit card or debit card, see Natasha and put in the memo Pastor Mike. If you put that in the memo, we'll make sure that it gets to Pastor Mike. Amen. All right, everybody's coming. Everybody got a chance to get Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Everybody's giving. How many know God is able? He's able. Everybody have a chance to give? Let's get working at it. All right, sing this with me. God is able to do. Everybody say, God, God. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's going to fulfill. He's going to fulfill every promise. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. follow him if you follow him oh you can't follow him he's able to follow her
Gary? How many of you know that you laugh at me? Yes, yes, yes. turn around, the Lord keep blessing you. What did you say? Every time you turn around, the Lord keep blessing you.
say it's called grace. That's what it is. It's grace. Amen. Grace gives us what we don't deserve. It is the unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor of God. Aren't you glad that you have favor on your life? Tell your neighbor, say favor ain't fair. Oh no, favor is not fair. Amen. Favor will have you living in a house that you know you can't afford. Driving a car that you know you don't have enough money for. Working on a job that you don't have the degree or the education for. Amen. The Bible says that a man's gift will make room for him. Amen. And you'll end up at the table with great men and everybody wondering how you got there. It's because of the favor of God. It's the favor of God that will spread a table and invite all your enemies to the table for you to be celebrated. David said, thou preparest a table before me in the... Listen, you've got to have some haters or you won't have anybody at the table. Amen. You need a... You need somebody at the table to observe how good God has been to you. Amen. I love what I love what uh, the millionaire that went bankrupt and he's a millionaire now for the second time. Financial Christian advisor Dave Ramsey. Anytime anyone asks him how he's doing, his response is better than I deserve. Amen. And that should be our response. Because no matter how it is with you right now, it's better than you deserve. Amen. I know sometimes we can see, you know, sing some of the things that's going on in our life. How you gonna pay your rent? All your money spent. A little bit to buy some food and baby need a pair of shoes. You got a light bill due and a gas bill too. Telephone disconnect. What you doing? Waiting on your neck. Listen, I'll tell you what you ought to do. Amen. Jesus is going to see you through. Amen. He will work it out for you. The old, old folks said that he will make a way out of nowhere. I've seen it. I've seen it happen too many times. This is no fairy tale, but my mother told the story before she went home to be with the Lord that she fed us in the morning and didn't know what we were going to eat in the evening. And when it came time for dinner, she asked the Lord, "What we going to eat?" He said, "Set the table." She said, listen, y'all don't hear me. She set the table with nothing in the kitchen, nothing on the stove, nothing in the cabinet. Some of y'all don't know what an empty refrigerator looks like. I can, I can tell you what it looks like. Amen. Just about the time she got the door, the table set, there was a knock on the door. Lady said, we had this and somebody gave it to us and it was too much, so I thought I would bring some over here to the Lord. We ain't good that evening. I'm just sorry that we don't live in neighborhoods like we used to. All of us were struggling in the neighborhood, and if anybody got blessed in the neighborhood, they were divided. I can remember many times we'd be blessed 
with a lot of meat and we would just all be so happy and mom would start cutting it and putting it in little bags. And she said, I want you to take this round to Miss Sanders. You take that round to Miss Johnson. Because when Miss Sanders and Miss Johnson got something, they sent some around to us. Amen. And the Lord has been so good to us. We absolutely need to share how good the Lord been to us. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Uh, I need your prayers today. Amen. I guess the enemy just didn't want me to deliver this message today. But well, we're going to deliver it anyway. The Bible tells us to preach in and out of season. And I was singing, I've been ailing. I don't want to give any glory to the enemy, but my voice is my instrument. I need my voice. I need it to work in an optimal place. Uh, but here for the last three or four weeks, uh, I have had a strain on my vocal cords. And just about every, just about every time I think it's better. And I try to push my vocal cords hard, I strain them again. So I was singing at a funeral on Friday, and I'm sorry, I don't know how to praise and sing and hold back. All I know is to give God my own. So I went, I went after a note. Uh, I didn't quite get it, and I felt something when I went after it. And so, uh, I don't know how much I have this morning, but I got the word. Amen. Amen. So, that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I, told my, I told my grandsons, uh, they spent the night with me last night. I told them, I said, all right. I said, I may need y'all to help me preach this morning. I told Gary, number three on the way in, I said, now when I say holly, I said, you say hallelujah. I said, when I say thank you, he, I said, you say Jesus. He said, no, I'm Papa. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I might be on my own today. Uh, but if you all pray for me, I believe we'll get a chance to get through this word. I want to honor the angel of this house, uh, yeah. Pastor Mike Payton, good friend of mine, long, long time friend. Amen. We've had the opportunity to work together on two occasions. We didn't just clean theaters. Amen. We worked for waste management together. Amen. At the same time, amen. His children are my God children. Some of my children is his God children. Amen. We've had a lot of, I mean, we've just gone through a lot of things together. I was actually kind of raised in his house as one of his sons. Amen. Everybody called his mama dear, and I called her dear too. Amen. He's got a nephew, Von Derrick Payton. Yes. He had a curfew. He couldn't be out after 10 o'clock unless I came by. If I came by to get him, then he got a chance to get out. He never got out without Deer giving me a little message. She said, now, bro, Gary, I want you to make sure Von don't get out. I said, Mom, I ain't going to let Von get into nothing. And then I would threaten Von if he were to do something that looked like he was going to get into something. Because I didn't want to disappoint Mother Peyton. And it's, it's good to have people. Uh, you know the thing I love about the church? There's a reason we call each other sister and brother. Because there are people in the body of Christ that treat you as good and sometimes better than your own natural family. Now, if you got family members in here and you can't say amen to that, just keep on looking straight ahead. But you know I told the truth. Amen. You got some folk in the body of Christ that will treat you better than your own natural siblings. I'm grateful to have people that love and that I call them my family. Amen. All right. I'm going to go right to the word here. I would be remiss if I just didn't mention these two people, uh, Kathy and Steve Hayden, uh, are my buddies. <laughs> Am I allowed to say that? Amen. They, they are my buddies. I, it did me so good just to hear Kathy singing, singing again today. And, and one of these times when I come over here, I want you to take her, take us back down memory lane and let her sing that kind of friend. Yes. Uh, that, that, that was my song. 
for Kathy to sing. My kind, you know, he's that kind of friend. And, and when I was learning uh, to play the piano, I want to blame Deacon Steve Hayden that I didn't develop into a better piano player. It's all his fault. Because he played bass so fluently and so easily that I never had to play bass with my left hand. And I still can. <laughs> they been a good friend, good brother, and so we're certainly uh, happy to see them. And all of you, the Lord's people, brother love, thank you all for coming. Uh, if, if I can't kiss all of you at once, I'm going to do like my pastor did. I'm just going to throw a kiss to you. Thank you all for coming this morning. I want to go right to the word of the Lord. Amen. I'm glad to see Rayfield this morning. Amen. Me and the church mother was just talking about you the other day. We was getting ready to put an APB out. Amen. Go find you. We'll be glad to see you this morning. All right. Uh, let's go here to the word. Now, I want to break some protocol. If you will allow me to break some protocol. I'm hot already. So... I'm going to take my jacket off. I feel like I can because the master ceremony's hat is on. Okay, all right. All right, okay. Okay, I got on my exercise vest this morning, so I got a little room. I love your verse and I love the theme. The theme is following God's heart. And we found that theme and they derived that theme from Jeremiah 315. Yes. I'm going to ask you to grab your Bible or your phone or whatever it is and stand to your feet as we read this verse. I just want to say that I Jeremiah 3.15, here's what it says. It says, and, y'all heard what, what Elder Steve said about and. Anytime you say and, there's something before it. What's before this is what a tough time the people were having because Israel had been out of the will of God and they needed restoration. So here's the word of the Lord. He says, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding you may be seated in the presence of the Lord I'd like to use uh, just a little derivative of your theme today following the heart of God can you say with me following the heart of God now look at one neighbor and Say this to them. Look them in the eye. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them. Amen. They can't get mad at you or treat you bad because they won't get in heaven. Amen. So look at them real good. Say it. Your challenge is to follow the heart of God. That, that's your challenge. That's all of our challenge. I love this verse. Uh, I normally and usually begin messages with quotes because I love quotes and I think quotes are very, very effective. But I've also found that the lyrics of songs are also very effective when it comes to uh, portraying a message. And what I've learned in uh, the Pentecostal church is that many times we love and sing songs and we don't know all the words. That's true. That's true. And sometimes we put our own words. Come on. Sometimes we put our own words in. Amen. Amen. So, so, uh, so I wanna, I want to uh, use the lyrics of an old song that my my oldest sister used to sing. I used to love to hear her sing this song, and we would get so animated with her voice that I've never really listened closely to the words. So this morning, I want to share the words to you, or with you rather. And the, the title of the song is Footprints of Jesus. And I'll just share the chorus in one verse. It says, Footprints of Jesus, 
lead the way. Footprints of Jesus by night and by day. And if I follow, life will be sweet. Saved by the prince. Saved by the prince of his wounded feet. The verse says, they led to Bethany. That's where he lay. They led to Gethsemane. That's where he prayed. But they led to Calvary. Salvation complete. Saved by the prince. Saved by the prince of his wounded feet. His steps are easy to follow because they're marked. And because he has marked prints, he's left a path for us that we don't have to guess about. All we have to do is examine him and so we can follow him. Are you with me today? As I researched this message uh, uh, and got prepared for it, it encouraged me. And my desire today is to encourage you, uh, to encourage your pastor, and to encourage uh, each of you as you realize and appreciate why God selected him. Now, let me give this disclaimer right away. There is no pastor anywhere who would have been the unanimous choice of any church. I got a couple of whales and no amen. But the fact that some of you all may not want him as pastor does not negate the fact that God chose him. So I want to help you. I want to help you. I want to help you realize why God selected him and the standards that God has charged him to maintain. The theme is very fitting, not just for the pastor, but this theme is fitting for each of us because many times uh, during a pastoral anniversary or celebration, uh, we take the evening off because we feel like the word is for the man of God. But I, would, I purposely today not only tried to prepare something that would help him, but that you could stay engaged in too as we deliver this message. The theme is fitting because it's everyone's challenge to follow the heart of God. Yeah. I'm reminded, not in my notes, but I'm reminded of that uh, very popular scripture in 2 Chronicles 7.14. It says, if my people which are called by my name would humble themselves and pray. Here it is. Seek my face. You know what shows on the face of a person? What they feel. If you seek the hand of God, you're not really looking for the hand of God. You're looking for what comes out of the hand. But when you seek the face of God, you're trying to see the expression on God's face. Young folk don't understand this now, but my generation understood the expression of the face. In church, we couldn't get up and laugh and talk and do a whole lot of stuff. Mom and daddy could turn around and give you a look. The ex, the ex, they, this was the stop that talking face. This was the I'm gonna get you face. They had a face for everything and we could look on the face and see how they felt. And the face is an expression of what's in the heart. So many times if you want to know the heart of God, you got to know the expression of his face. It's our challenge to follow the heart of God. The scripture says this, in Romans 8, 14, it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So I, I want to, for a short period this morning, I want to examine with you what it means for us to be led by God. Because if you're going to follow, you have to be led. Yeah. What it means for us to follow, 
God is a God, not a stationary God, but God is a God of motion and progress. So you have to pursue God. When you pursue God, you got to have some sort of apparatus uh, to know which direction he's moving. So we want to examine what it means to be led, to follow, and to pursue the heart of God. Look at your neighbor and say, follow the heart of God. So, what does it mean to follow the heart of God? Let's, let's unpack the theme and the subject here for a moment with definitions. To follow, by definition, means to go after a person or a thing that is preceding or going before you. To follow means that someone is in front of you, you are observing, and you are trying to follow the leader. Are you with me? It implies emulating and reproducing what you have observed as children. If we did something and somebody behind us did the exact same thing, we called them a copycat. Amen. That's what follow the leader is. And childhood games of follow the leader and Simon says... And sometimes praise leader, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Lift your hand and say thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. See, some of y'all still don't know how to play Simon Says. <laughs> Man, you would be out because you didn't raise your hand. Okay. So Simon Says and follow the leader demonstrated observing a leader and then mimicking or reproducing what the leader did. So, to follow the heart of God means to observe the heart of God and do likewise. Amen. When Jesus told the story of the good Samaritan and he said finally the Samaritan was the one who was the neighbor, he told the young man go and do likewise. Take the example and then reproduce that example. So if we're going to follow the heart of God, we have to know how to observe the heart of God. Amen. And then after observing the heart of God, we have to pursue and go after him. Are you with me? Amen. But what does the heart of God mean? The Bible tells us that we look on the outward appearance. We don't have the capacity to look in the heart of an individual. So if we can't see the heart of an individual, we don't even know our own. I'm trying not to get too excited. Too. We don't even know our own heart. The Bible says that the heart is desperately, not just wicked, desperately wicked. Who can know it? You can't know your own heart. You can look at somebody else's situation and say, if that's what me, I would have. Yeah, that's what you say until you get there. You don't know what you'll do, but for the grace of God, amen, somebody. So what does it mean? What does the heart of God mean? If we don't know anybody else's heart. We don't know our heart. How can we know God's heart? Look at somebody say, we can do it. We can do it. Oh, yes, we can. We can know beyond the shadow of a doubt what's in the heart of God. Bless his name. So when we talk about the heart of God, we are not referring to and we don't mean God like us has an organ in his chest with two atria and two ventricles pumping blood. You're right. That's not what we mean when we talk about the heart of God. Generally, when you talk about the heart of something, you are describing the central and innermost part of it. You are normally talking about the most vital part of it. What is it that makes it what it is? Are you with me today? It is the heart that is the seat and the center of how things operate. It's not what's in your mouth and in your mind. It's what's in your heart that determines whether you're honest, where your motives come from, and if you're speaking truth. Anybody saying nothing to me? When we 
ask somebody to speak from the heart, what we're really asking them is to speak honestly to us. Speak genuinely to us. Don't hide it and shroud it in mystery, but, but tell me just like it is. Don't embellish it. Don't paint it. Don't sugarcoat it. Just give me the truth of it. That's what it means when you speak from the heart. Man, it means more sometimes when you tear up the words that you've written down on the page and then just from the heart say what you think about them. Yes. 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 Amen, somebody. Amen. I'm opting now for blank gift cards. It's okay to have the picture on the outside, <coughs> but there is something more touching and personal when you write something on the inside and give it to them. Anybody with me today? It is because when you speak from the heart, you speak from the genuineness of who you are. The Bible says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the, the mouth speaks. You, it is what is most abundant in your heart that you speak through your mouth. Now, I won't go into it when you always cussing and fussing and uh -huh. Uh -huh. that says something else about your heart. In fact, the Bible says there's a breach or a hole in your spirit. Yes. Amen, somebody. But when the love of God is in your heart and when it's saturating and most abundant in your heart, the words that come out of your mouth will reflect what's in your heart. Yeah. Not every word, but it's those words that are speaking from the heart. Y'all yeah. said that reach the heart. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. And so God, just like us, speaks from what is most abundant in his heart. If we are made in the image of God and the likeness of God, the likeness of God, meaning we operate like God. You see, the image of God is the tripartite of God. Tripart God is he's Father, He's Son, He's the Holy Ghost or Spirit. We are, we are spirit, we are soul, we are body. We're in the likeness of the, the image, rather, of God, but the likeness of God means that we operate like God operates. That's why God is created with his word, and that's why death and life is in the power of our tongue. Bless his name. And so in the likeness of God, it means we operate and function like God operates. If he says to us, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak, then when God talks to us, he's talking to us out of the abundance of his heart. That's why we can see it. He's talking and telling us what's in his heart. Brothers, Y'all know what the sisters mean when they say we need to have the talk. Now the brother said amen. <laughs> but all of them know exactly what I'm talking about. They mean that there's some issues that have been going too long and we need to get right down to the nitty gritty. Let all the sisters say amen. I told, I told y'all brothers. They want us to talk honestly. They want us to talk sincerely. They don't want us to talk in riddles. They want us to talk directly so they can understand. Bless his name. So God, <laughs> who's that laughing over there? So God, like us, speaks out of the abundance of his heart. God then speaks from his character. He speaks from his attributes. His character is that he's a holy God. Our Father, which are them. You know the next thing they say? Hallowed. Holy be thy name. Leviticus 11.44 said, I, the Lord your God, am holy. Therefore, be ye holy in all manner of conversation. 
And so when he speaks, he speaks out of his character, the holiness of his character. When he speaks, he speaks out of his attributes, his justice, and, and, and his fairness, and his faithfulness. But all of that is rooted in his love. Justice, faithfulness, all of that, it, those, are, those are branches on the tree. But when you trace the trunk down to the root, it's all rooted in unconditional love. Yeah. Everything God does, everything God says, everything God is involved in is because he's love. Yeah. Look at somebody say unconditional love. The apostle John just summed it up and said, God is love. Love doesn't come from the head. Love comes from the heart. Yeah. So anytime God is talking, he is revealing his heart to you. Look at somebody and say, that's the heart of God. Yes, yes, yes. All of his words are spoken in truth because they are all spoken from the root of his un... Don't miss unconditional. Which means you don't have to look a certain way you don't have to have a certain thing. You don't have to be associated with a certain kind of people. You don't have to be a special color. You don't have to drive a certain kind of car. You don't have to be a certain size. You don't need to be a size 8, a size 6, a size You are none of that. It's because he's love. He gives it because of not who you are. He gives it to you because of who he is. Look at somebody say unconditional love. Oh, yeah. Unconditional. Unconditional. Meaning I don't have to jump through any hoops. I don't have to run around any bases to get God. Y'all know what we do. When we got our eye on somebody, we dress a certain way. We put on a certain perfume or cologne. And sometimes we sashay by so they can get a look at us. You don't have to do none of that for God. Because before the foundation of the world, he loved you. Before you were knit. Listen, y'all talking about knitting. God was the first one who knitted. He said before you were knit in your mother's womb. I knew you. Bless his name. I'm just about done. All his words are spoken in truth. They're spoken from his unconditional love and then it is qualified and verified by two immutable things about God they are two unchangeable God two unchangeable things about God if God could change then you could expect God to waver but there are two immutable things about God first one is God doesn't change he's the same yesterday Today and forever means he's not going to change up on you. 200 years from now, God's still going to be God. When we go into eternity, into everlasting, God is going to remain God. And because God can't change, God cannot lie. Think about that for a minute. Not that he won't lie. He can't lie. That means anything God speaks come to pass. All you got to do is get God to say it. Say God, God say my child is delivered. God say my body is healed. God heal my cancer. Heal my headache. Heal my sinus. All we have to do is get him to say it. Psalm 33 said he spoke and it was so. He commanded and it stood fast. I know axe heads don't swim until God says swim back to the shore for the man that lost his axe head. I know rivers don't stand up and seas don't stand up and make a bridge through unless God says stand up and let my people through. But somebody say whatever he says it comes to pass. Two immutable things God can't change. God cannot lie. So we must keep in mind. Watch this now. We got to keep in mind that when we read the word of God 
and understand what God has said, we are observing the heart of God. When you read God's word, God has spoken in truth out of his word, rooted in his unconditional love. He's telling us what's in his heart. How many want to know the heart of God? Listen, if I say, I want to know the heart of God. Well, let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Show you how you follow the heart of God. Simply. You obey what he says. You can't follow the heart of God if you don't read the heart of God. You can't follow the heart of God if you don't worship in the heart of God. You can't follow the heart of God if you don't spend time in his bride. Because you know the bride is the heart of every husband. Ain't nobody saying nothing in here. It's what he loves. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus gave his life for the church. You know why? Because he loved the church. I don't care what people think about the church. I don't care what kind of criticism they bring against the church. I don't care how they say the church didn't change. The church ain't like it used to be. The church need to do this. The church need to do that. The church need to go up. You're too long. You're too short. You're too loud. You ain't loud enough. You play music. You shouldn't play music. I don't care what they say. God loves the church. And when he's coming back, he's coming back for a church. Bless his name. So if, so if, so if, I'm trying to calm down. So if, I only know one way to preach. I, I'm trying my best to hold my voice, but son, I know what Jeremiah meant when he said it's like fire in my bone. Bless his name. And so, and so there, so to follow simply, to follow the heart of God, we have to read his word and obey his word. Look at somebody say, read and obey. Read and obey. That's how you follow the heart of God. You read what God has said from his heart in his book. And when you read it, you observe the heart of God. And when you observe the heart of God, it's not enough just to know what it says. You got to reproduce it. Look at somebody say, obey. Now, let me get to the man of God. Which is the reason that a closer examination of the text will reveal that your pastor, yes, is a man, but he's not an ordinary man. There's something different about your pastor. Uh-huh, let me talk tongue and cheek because I'm a pastor too. But I'm over at Restoration, so I can say some things over here I can't say at home. I'm talking about Peyton right now. Okay, I'm talking. I'm talking about. Did you hear what Pastor? Yeah, Pastor said, but I'm talking about Peyton. Truth, Lord. But we eat the crumbs that fall from the table. So I'm gonna eat a crumb or two here too. He's not an ordinary man. Don't miss that. Not because I said it. It's because God said it. He's not an ordinary man, but he is a man chosen by God. Amen. Don't miss it. Amen. Because sometimes we get our choice mixed up with God's choice. And sometimes we are choosing things that God has not chosen. The prophet Jeremiah records in 315, he says, and I will give you pastors. The first thing you need to understand that God has given pastors, which means a pastor is a gift. And he's a gift of love from the heart of God. You got that? Your pastor is something that God chose to give you and he gave him to you out of his love. He selected and picked exclusively from among men by God alone. You can't elect them. You can't 
buy them. You can't put a pulpit committee together. The pastor, the God-given pastor, is a visible human expression of the love of an invisible God. I need to say that one more time. Your pastor is a visible human expression of the love of the invisible God. Your pastor has been set in place to make visible to you that God loves you. Look somebody say, God loves you. Yes, he does. A pastor's a gift. He's selected by God to communicate to you the word of God, which is the heart of God. When God gets ready for you to know his heart, he'll give you a pastor. Amen. Well, I can be saved at home. Can you stay saved at home? Is the question. I was at home when I got saved. But you can't stay at home. You're part of a body. You're part of a congregation. You're part of the bride of Christ, which is the object of Christ's love. And if you want to know the heart of God, you want to know what, listen, sisters, let me help you. Easy to get up to men. Just find out what they love. Come on, sisters. Y'all hear the brothers laugh and the sisters didn't say nothing. Y'all see, see how that coin flipped? I'm trying to help you. Find out what they love. You trying to catch him and he loves to eat, learn to cook. Anybody say? Anybody say nothing in here? If you watch this, if you find out what he loves and what he takes interest in, and make that interest your interest. You have made a place for association. Anybody say nothing here? You're not going to spend any time with me if you don't love chocolate. But if you know I love chocolate, and you give me a DeBrand's car, I'll take you to DeBrand's with me. We'll eat chocolate together. I ain't going to say who gave me a DeBrand's car this morning. Anyway, 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 anyway. If you find out, watch this, what a person loves, and if you adopt the same love, it brings commonality among you. Are you with me? How can two walk together except? If you're going to walk with God, you got to find some agreement with the things God loves. you got to learn to love prayer. You gotta learn to love praise. You gotta learn to love the Word of God. And you gotta learn. I'm still trying to learn this fasting. Come on here. There's power offered to you that only comes by fasting and prayer. I'm about three quarters done. So if you find Things in common with God, with the gift that God gave you, because this man has been selected to communicate to you, the people of God, the heart of God. When a pastor is on point, he's not preaching what people want to hear. He is preaching what God wants the people to hear. And he is only preaching out of the love and the expression of God. Can I say this? When the pastor seems like he getting on your case, he's not angry against you. He's trying to help you. Amen. Let me help you. See, if you got a pastor that all he feeds you is donuts and cinnamon rolls, he don't love you. Whom the Lord loves. It's in the book. Somebody know it. He chases. Every now and then, if he see you going wrong, he's less than a pastor. Not to tell you, you're going the wrong way. Why? 
Because God don't want you to go the wrong way. Thank you, Jesus. Said, I'll give you pastors. And then I'm going to give you a certain kind of pastor. I'm going to give you a pastor according to my heart. This is God saying that I'm going to give you a pastor who's got a heart like mine. It means that he's a man after God's heart. We have problems with this, but I want to kind of help you today. Because we see how David was a man after God's own heart. But David had these treacherous stints in his life. Thank you, Pastor. Listen, David is the great king. David slew Goliath. David not only ruled in Hebron, but David reigned over all of the tribe. David's name, even now, is renowned in the land of Israel. The star and the emblem of Israel, the nation, is called the Star of David, Leonardo da Vinci sculpted David, they painted David, but I want you to understand, David was human. Man after God's own heart. I want to try to make peace with this for you today. Because we have concluded that people after God's heart are perfect. It is not so. It is not true. Read the life of David. David was derelict in his duties. And when he should have been at war, he was at home. Sometimes we derelict in our duty. When we should be at church, we at home. Sometimes he was on the rooftop looking at what he shouldn't have been looking at. Sometimes we at home watching what we shouldn't be watching. Come on here. Don't fall off the wagon now. I'm preaching good. I'm just trying to stop you from pointing out the faults of your leader. Yes, sir. The world is already against men of God. Don't need the church to help. David sees a woman that's another man's wife. The man is at war. He took the man's wife. He slept with the man's wife. He impregnated the man's wife. And then to try to cover his sin, he called the man home yeah. from war and said, go sleep with your wife. Yeah. Yeah. He was such an honorable man, he said, no. He slept at the king's palace and wouldn't go home. When he wouldn't go home, I'm talking about the man after God's own heart. Yeah. And after that, he's sitting back to the front line and told his commander, say, here's what I want you to do. Say, I want you to put him in the hottest part of the battle. I want you to put him right up front where the fire is really going on. And then when he's not looking, I want you to have everybody back up from him so that he's left in front of the enemy by himself so that he gets killed. And before you look at David, I want you to look at every time I say, I know this is wrong, but I'm just going to ask for forgiveness when I finish. After David had the man killed, she had the child, the child didn't live. Then he took, we don't even talk about this, then he married her. Took his wife, killed the man, took his wife. The man after God's own heart. But let me tell you what it means to be a man after God's own heart. It don't mean you get it right every time. It just means every time you get it wrong, you go back to God. It means you go back. It means you go back. You know how I know? Because when we've done something wrong and it's so out of character for us that we can't even believe that we did it ourselves, just keep on looking this way like you don't know what I'm talking about. You can look back at something and say, how did I do that? How did I say that? How did I go there? How did I get into that? But you know what we do? We go right to David's psalm and say, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Restore to me 
the joy of my, give me my joy again. So I can be glad when they said unto me, let us go into the, but somebody say house of the Lord. So he's a man according to mine heart. Not a perfect man. But what makes him a man of God is that he accepts the responsibility, no matter what's going on in his life, to carry the word of love from the heart of God to the people of God. He's committed to delivering the word. He's a good mailman. He'll preach in season. He'll preach out of season. He'll preach when he feel good. He'll preach when he don't feel good. He'll preach when he's strong in his body. He'll preach when he come in limping. He'll preach when his voice is strong. and He'll preach when his voice is strained. Because look at somebody say, he wants you to have the message. Yes, yes. He is sent to communicate God's love to you. He is God's hallmark card. Do you care enough to send the very best? The man of God is the hallmark card for God. He is the one that brings the message to you. And all God is trying to say to you is that it don't matter what you're in. I love you. It don't matter what you've been through. I love you. It doesn't matter who walked out on you. I love. It doesn't matter how much you have. I love you. Look at somebody say, God loves you. Yes, he does, unconditionally. He's the hallmark card. He, he's there to express and communicate to you that God loves you. His sole purpose is to proclaim the love of God in salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. He is charged by God to ensure that you know and understand the love of God. That's his job. Not just that you get saved. But in salvation, you need to understand how much God loves you. The Bible says that he's going to feed you with knowledge and his sole purpose is to make sure you understand the love of God. You need to understand that there's nothing you can do and God will throw you away. You need to understand that there's nowhere you can fall that God won't pick you up from. The steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. We stop reading right there, but the next verse says, Though he fall, good men fall. But he shall not utterly be cast away. He shall not be thrown away. Why? Because God upholds him. God has too much invested in him to let him fail. And God has too much invested in us. To let us fail. Look at somebody say, I'm more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Yes, he's charged yes, yes. with the responsibility of making you know and understand John 3.16. For God not just loved you, but he so loved the world. He loved the world in such a way that uh, he gave not a son, but he gave his Look, somebody say, only begotten oh, son. Now, I, I, you know, I, I, I got to try to think about this because uh, I, it, I, I know and I remember the pain of losing my youngest son. Yes. Yes. And every time the possibility of losing my oldest son crosses my mind, something uh, uh, stringently stands up in me and say, no, I'm not ready for that because... He's my only son now. He, he's the only one left. He's the only one in my family. He's my only offspring. He's my only son. And I, I, I just, I, 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 I love the Lord and I love his people. But I, if, if it came down to be given my son for you all to be saved, I'm, I'm, I'm mighty afraid that some of you all would not make it into the kingdom. Because... Cause that's my only son and That's why you can't compare Our love to God's love Because God loved us In such a way that He gave his only begotten son He gave the only son That he had He gave He gave Look at somebody say He gave his son And he gave his son That whosoever 
bigger than him. And I, and I got a problem with whosoever. Because there are some whosoever's I couldn't give my son for. I couldn't give my son for people that smoke so much dope that they steal from grandma and sell the chip. I don't think I could give my son for whosoever the serial killer that's going, killing and burying people on the beachfront and now they're up to 14 bodies and don't even understand if them, I say whosoever. I don't know if I could give my life, the life of my son for whosoever, but, but the Bible said that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. that you know how it proceeds out of the mouth of God through the word through the mouth of the preacher how can they hear oh come on here come on I didn't write it how can they hear how can they hear is worded in such a way that it means you can't totally hear without preaching how can how can they hear without a preacher how can they preach Except they sin. God sends preachers to speak the word. They, they, they feed the people of God. Many times the problem is not that there's not enough food on the table. Many times there's not enough knees under the table to eat. Oh, come on. Well, let me go back to my childhood. We had McDonald's and Burger King. But we didn't have McDonald's and Burger King money. So if you got to the table and something was on the table that you didn't want to eat, you had two alternatives. Either you ate what was on the table or you went to bed fasting. Fasting. That, that's a force fast. <laughs> that's what it was. And now, if we get to the table and we don't like something, we grab our purse and our billfold. You take your pick. You don't like Kentucky Fried Chicken, you can eat leaves. 
You don't like leaves, you need Popeyes. Yeah. You got choices now yeah. where you eat. And it is so sad that the church now is in the same place. Sometimes it's being preached in your church. If you don't like it, you tune up another message. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Anybody, ain't nobody praying in this church now. I believe we're in the time where the Bible says, for the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine. And here's what they do when they don't endure it. The Bible says they heap to themselves teachers, parenthetically teachers that preach what they can't endure. And so if your pastor is preaching something that's kind of tough to endure, and it's supposed to be tough to endure, if the word is finding you in a place and you're not moving, I don't want you to think the word is not supposed to be tough. The word is supposed to be tough on you anytime you take a position against what the Bible says. Amen. They told us that if they run across your feet once, move back. But if you don't move and he come again, guess what? He's going to hit you again. He preaching on me all the time. No, you just haven't moved yet. Come on. Come on. Let me finish. I got I to gotta close. I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. But what's happening now when they can't endure what's being taught, they heat to themselves. Facebook streams that tickle their ear. I don't want to hear about sin. I want to hear about the blessing plan. I don't want to hear about changing my life. I want to hear about two cars in the driveway, chicken in every pot. I want to hear about God giving me the desires of my heart. Even that's only half the verse. He'll only give you that if you delight yourself in him. How delighted are you in him? Are you dreading coming to church? Do they stay in church too long for you? I'm going to tell them. I'm going I'm to get in trouble. But I'm going to tell them. Because out of the mouth of babes. <laughs> if, if you don't want to hear the truth, don't you have, don't you have children around you? Two of, my, two of my grandsons spent the night with me last night. Amen. And we was up this morning. I had a flashback, Pastor Mike. I remember the mornings when it was just me, Gary, and Justin. And I was I was moving and ironing clothes and turning and make sure you brush your teeth and make sure you wash, wash your face, wash your face, wash your, put the put the deodorant on. Where your socks at? Where your socks? Where's your, put your shoes up. Put the... <laughs> Doing all that. One of them looked at me and said, Paul, Paul, does it always take you this long to get ready on Sunday morning? I said, no, I don't have to do no ironing on Sunday morning. I said, I just have to get me ready. I got some extra stuff this morning. And then the other one said to me, he said, said, we're not having a church at our church, is we? I said, no. I said, we're going to another church. He says, how long is it going to be? I'm getting, ready, I'm getting ready to get in trouble now. Y'all gonna defend me when I get in trouble? I'm getting ready to get in trouble now. Okay, okay, now I'm remember y'all. He said, how long is it gonna be? I said, I don't know. I said, we're just going in to praise the Lord. He said, because now I have quit church. church. I said, what's quick church? He said, we don't be there long at all. We eat afterwards. I said, oh. Oh, my we laughing, but I want you to understand something. When you delight yourself in something, you stop looking at the clock. I'm not saying the time doesn't is not important, but when it's something you really love, isn't it peculiar and strange how you're waiting for the last five minutes at work to go by 
so you can clock out. How slow the minutes go. And then when you get something that you really love, they go. It's how and the perspective you have of it. I read a little joke that said, how long is 30 seconds? The response said, it depends on what side of the bathroom door you're on. <laughs> in the bathroom, 30 seconds is nothing but waiting to get in the bathroom. Are you all with me? It's kind of comical, but I want you to understand something. People use the church now as consumers. And if they don't have certain options, it doesn't deserve my full attention by your heads. I gotta say just a few more tough things here and then we'll pray. I wonder how much better your church would do if you worked as hard for the church as you do for your children and grandchildren's athletic team, school project. I wonder how much better your church would be if you worked as hard as getting things for the church as you do for yourself. I wonder how much better the church would do if you put money aside for God like you put money aside for things you want to buy. Like I said, consider your ways. We want to do the things that pursue not the hand of God, the heart of God. Because the truth of the matter is, when you first get saved, it's what God does for you. But after you're saved, the tables have to turn to what are you doing for God. Salvation starts with the forgiving of sins. And it's supposed to culminate in service somewhere. The church has gotten confused because they believe being saved is enough. And it's not. Here's the way I'll prove it to you. You have a gift. And the gift that God has given you, the Bible says, every good and perfect gift comes from above, comes from the Father of lights, with whom there's no shadow of turning. So the gift you have is a divine gift. It's been given to you by God. But then he tells you what that gift is for. He said he gave the gift so that the body could profit live. And if you never reach the place of service, you have taken the gift that God has given you for the body and you are depriving the body of part of the heart of God. If you got a prophetic gift and you're afraid to use it, if you can sing and you'll only sing at home in the shower and in your car, if you can count at home and at work and refuse to help count money in the house of God. You deprive the body. And if we want to follow the heart of God, we want to love the church just like God loves the church. And so I want to pray with you as I close. Pastor, you spoke to me this morning and I understand that to follow the heart of God, I got to know what God is saying. I got to follow God. I have to take the gift that I haven't been using. I got to find a place to put it into operation. If I spoke that to you, without delay, just stand up right where you are. There's no harm in being wrong. The harm is staying wrong. If you are not actively moving and working in church, you are depriving the body of Christ. So stand up. And let's, let's pray together so that God can identify your gift so that your gift can be put into operation for the good of the body of Christ. I'm waiting on you. Stand up. Stand up. Because he cared for me. It's
such a special way. And yes, I praise you. I lift you up. I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled. Kathy, see what you did. such a special way and yes and yes I praise you I'll lift you up magnify your name that's why my heart is filled come on stand up I'm waiting on you that's why my heart that's why That's why my heart, that's why, that's why. Come on, don't be ashamed. If you're in church and you're not actively helping in church, I'm talking to you. This is not, this is not spiritual. This is a plea because the harvest is plenteous, the laborers are few. Is there anyone who will work for the Lord today? Come on, stand up, stand up. You that have stood, lift your hands to God. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, that a man's gift makes room for him and it'll bring you before a great man and then it says if you are faithful over a few things it says that he'll make you ruler over many things you don't have to do everything all you have to do is identify one gift go into one place to help the church the church need ushers. The church need people to help clean it. Church need hospitality. People, the church need people to help cut the grass, keep the grounds. The church need, come on here. Amen. You have time. You have talent. Amen. All we need is your participation. Lift your hand. Let's pray. Forever you're my king. Father, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, these that have stood, they stood because you called them. It's not because I called them. It is because you called them. You said in your word that you give seed to the sower. To every person that will sow in the kingdom, you give seed and resource in their hand to help the harvest come in. These individuals that stood on the floor now, they understand that they have a divine gift given by the power of God that you can use for service. I pray God now that you would illuminate the gift that you've given them. And then I want you to open the door of opportunity so that they respond and walk in and help to put their shoulder to the wheel to bring in the harvest. You said the harvest truly is plenteous. But there are few laborers in the church. You said to us to pray, therefore, that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into his vineyard and I thank you for these that have stood I thank you for these laborers and I pray that you would move around the heart of many laborers who have buried gifts and buried talents that should be operating in the church of God I pray God that you would anoint them set them in a place where they're able to serve and minister as unto the Lord 
You said, whatever we do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. I thank you and I believe it in Jesus' name. Now, those of you all that are here, I want you to open your mouth and say, thank you, Lord, for more laborers. Say it again. Say, thank you, Lord, for more laborers. One more time. Say, Lord, I thank you for more laborers. Now, I want you to open your mouth and thank them like God has already sent them. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. In the name of Jesus and the Lord's people said, thank God, amen and amen. All right, look at your neighbor and say, follow the heart of God.